Um, we are here with Andrew Melnick, uh, who is speaking to us from his private home in Kiev, which, as you know, um, is a city that is under attack from Russian forces in an invasion that thus far has lasted about seven days. Andrew, could you could you just tell me a bit about yourself uh, and what you do for, for a living? Uh, as I said, uh, I was involved in um, real estate and development of different business in the Caribbean, in Barbados, in Dominica. And exactly before next trip to that destination, war uh, find me in Kiev. So two weeks later, I should go to Barbados. Okay, right. And and can you walk me through the events of the the last week or so? What has been your experience in Kiev? Uh, you mean the experience of past week? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was uh, a bit uh, unexpected and interesting, but also a bit sad experience because um, for sure I saw a lot of time different type of wars in different parts of the earth. Uh, but frankly speaking, I never think that it could happen in uh, Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine was uh, one of the most uh, destroyed mm -hmm. country while uh, Second World War and after it's all this country also was involved in a lot of different wars. So I hope in Ukraine it's never will, could be, but uh, suddenly um, we remain in the same situation. Um, but in the same time, uh, within this week, I saw a lot of people who help each other, who mm -hmm. support uh, those countries, those government, and first of all, uh, those army uh, who now fight with maybe 10 times more uh, big army from Russia. So it's uh, from one side, it's a sad experience, from other side, it's... Um, uh, it's it's good experience because um, I saw on people from different um, angles and, and I, it it was great experience. Yeah, and and what about what you have been seeing and hearing? Have you actually confronted the shelling and the bombing and the shooting directly, or is it just something that you hear? And, and if so, what does it look like and sound like? <clears throat> No, no, no. Uh, we are under bombing and attack directly and not only Kiev, but almost all big Ukrainian cities. It's like Kharkov, Odessa, Chernigiv and Kiev as well. Uh, at least three or four times per each day uh, we are in under attack from ballistic rocket and maybe two, three, four times per hour in the whole city we hear um, air attack from different bombs and uh, artillery and something like that. So it's we are directly under attack and it's livid area. It's not uh, military uh, points, but it's uh, places where live just, just, just ordinary people. Yeah. Uh, do you feel as though you are um, in direct danger? Do you get that impression? Yes, for sure. Uh, because uh, maybe two days ago, uh, exactly my direction of my part of the city was under attack of ballistic rocket. Uh, it was two rocket. Um, forget those names, but it's quite big uh, intercontinental rocket and uh, two of them was shot in uh, military points just near my home, not exact near my home, but a couple kilometers, but it was huge sound and explosion. And uh, a lot, a lot, much, much more heavy situation from other parts of the city where much more um, exist many 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 russian soldiers from other parts of the city it's it's a different city uh, divided by dnipro river for two uh, parts and from other parts a much much more heavy situation there are explosion on the street each day a lot of time per day and there are a lot of people are killed or injured okay. so we are in direct danger for sure okay 
And what are you doing to protect yourself? What What is the advice being given? And how much can you do to, to, to keep yourself safe? Uh, it's uh, not too much to do what you can do to um, avoid you or save you from big uh, intercontinental ballistic rockets. So you could be in a bomb shelter and pray maybe. <laughs> Uh, but when it's happened uh, three, four times per hour, um, maybe one or two days later, you just um, never mind about these signals on sirens on the street and just think that maybe in this time you will remain alive and and see you next day. Okay. And do do you know of anyone who has been who has been killed? What are the reports on the ground? Are, are the majority of casualties? Civilians, are they Russian soldiers? Are they Ukrainian soldiers? Who is being most affected by, by the shelling that's happening right now, as you said, almost on the hour? Mm, unfortunately, I personally know people uh, who already killed uh, during this conflict and people who are injured during this conflict. Um, from my uh, personal uh, people around me, it's uh, one of my friends and they were shot at uh, not really not exactly known by whom but uh, expected that it was uh, russian uh, terrorist team uh, this uh, it was family man uh, his wife and two kids and they trying to leave city and uh, go to the mm -hmm. western part of the ukraine uh, but uh, on the suburb of the city, exact, it's, as I say, it's uh, next uh, side, a different side of the city. Uh, they were shot at uh, from automatic weapons, and uh, this two person was killed and two kids now in hospital. So it's unfortunately it's my personal friends. And uh, regarding who more affected uh, during this conflict. Um, hard to say. I think it's everyone, Ukrainian army for sure, Ukrainian civilian for sure, and whole Russian uh, army as well. My condolence to you first and foremost. I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, what, what, is, what would you say is the impact um, on you mentally as you sit at home hearing about losing some of your friends, potentially being yourself in danger as well. What's going through your mind? How are you coping with that kind uh, of, of pressure and assault? Um, my, um, in my mind, uh, in my head for first day, I uh, was thinking maybe I should also leave the city. Maybe it would be better to be in another place and so on and so on. But from um, day second and especially after this situation with my friends. Um, for me, uh, it was obviously that I remain here and do all what I can to, to protect other people, to protect my family, to protect my friends, my city and my country. So now in my, in my mind, it's only one thing. Um, fight and do all my best for my country and my friends okay and you're staying you're staying alone right now you're by yourself uh I, yeah i'm staying alone uh but uh, i have a lot of neighbors here we are all in uh, civil guard now and it's like um, military uh, not army, but like military organization, just to protect our neighbors, uh, to protect each other, to protect uh, our area of the city. So we do a lot of things to to support our army and help them. Yeah. So we we were hearing that some ordinary citizens and residents of Ukraine were being given guns um, to fight and to be part yeah. of the resistance yes. and to yeah. learn how to uh, create, you know bombs and cocktails that might be able to aid in that fight you're saying that you are prepared to to stand up and fight for your country yeah. how, how prepared are you um 
I prepare myself, I prepare my mind, uh, I and as I remain uh, was prepared before when I uh, passed my special uh, military force uh, in the army and my previous life experience. So I prepared to this. Yeah. Um, and in terms of, of um, your weaponry and whatnot, is it is it any match for what the, the Russians invading um, are carrying with them as they come into the city? Uh, yeah, uh, to this uh, civil uh, guard um, uh, formation, uh, accepted people who already uh, pass the, those or army education or spend time in army or maybe were in police before. So it's people who know how to use uh, weapons and, and what to do with these weapons. And these people uh, mainly uh, remain in uh, those city and help uh, government to control situation in city to avoid uh, a lot of crime, to avoid um, terrorism from Russia side. And this uh, civil guard will be used only in uh, Russia army in entrance to some city. So it's. Uh, uh, usually uh, on the first uh, place to who meet Russian army, it's Ukrainian army, but to support them from behind, it's a civil guard. Okay. And the final question for you, what, what's next? Where do you go from here? Uh, can you plan? How far ahead can you plan? What's the plan? If there's any plan? Um, when I, where, where I will go after it, privately me, I'm not sure because I just came from my uh, civil service and maybe this night I spent at home, maybe not, it depends on situation. Um, what uh, would be after um, in political situation, I'm not sure that nearest time uh, two parties, I mean, Ukraine and Russia will find solution because uh, Russia get nothing after this invasion. Known uh, big Ukrainian cities um, took by Russia. Um, so they bring more than 100,000 of uh, soldiers here, a lot, a lot, a lot of different techniques and just stay near our cities and that's all. So it's not that result that they expect. And Ukraine as well, uh, no reason to say we are give up and that's all. So until one part, and of course it should be Russia, not accept uh, our... Um, our think uh, how this conflict could be decided. Uh, I think it will not happen. Lots of uncertainty. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew Melnik, who is at his private home in a suburb in Ukraine, uh, confronting almost face to face the, the Russian invasion. Thank you so much for, for joining us and for speaking. Thank with you. Me.